Today we're going to take a look at scanning a small object. Uh, a small object, according to Shining 3D's X-Star software that comes with the Einstar, is between 100 to 200 millimeters in dimension, whereas medium and large objects would be objects larger than 200 millimeters. For those of you, like me, that don't speak millimeter, 100 millimeters is about 4 inches. Because a lot of our customers have asked us why somebody might want to scan a smaller object like this toy here using medium to large settings, we went ahead and we reached out to Shining 3D's tech support and addressed the question to them. They responded with this link that I'm displaying on my screen right now. I'm not going to read this to you because you're probably quite capable of reading this yourself. So even though in the XSTAR software it says object size, right, it's a little bit confusing because small object and medium to large objects isn't necessarily referring to the object size itself, but rather to the field of view that will need to be allocated to the scanner in order for the scanner to take in the data from the object that you're scanning. I actually need to clean up my workspace here. So something to keep in mind, even if you're just scanning a small object, but you're using hybrid alignment, so you're you're taking advantage of all of the tracking markers that you've laid out, you'll probably get better results if you were to set the object size to medium and large, because it will increase the field of view, which will allow the scanner to take in all the tracking marker coordinates and better align the object to them. We're gonna start off by scanning this in object mode. We're going to keep it at medium and large objects. We're going to use hybrid alignment. For this particular scan, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the resolution. So keep in mind this is working kind of opposite to what we're, we're used to thinking of when we think of resolution. Like for example, if you're setting up a document to print, right? Like the higher the resolution, the better the print's going to be. Here it's inverted. The lower the resolution, the more detail the scanner will take in. So let's go ahead and lower that 2.2. Go ahead and set up our object. All right, let's go ahead and start. All right, taking a look at that, we are missing some of the dark value in here. We can get that a little bit later when we uh, create a new project group and we align it. Next, I'm going to turn the object on its side so come over to project groups, go new projects group, keep the same settings, apply, lay it down. We're going to flip them over, new projects, here we go. Let's go ahead and optimize and generate point clouds. All right, good to go. Now we're ready to align. So for the fixed window, I'm just going to hit project one, floated window, I'll hit project two, and I'm just going to try feature auto align. Hit apply, looks like it worked. So now we're going to hit next, and you can see the newly aligned object. So for the floated window, we'll go ahead and hit project three, hit apply, and there it is. And now we'll go ahead and mesh the model. For the mesh, we're going to select water type model. Let's just go with the defaults. We'll hit apply. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right. So we ended up reaching out to Shining 3D's tech support a second time. We showed them that we were able to capture the object detail of a small object using medium to large settings and tracking markers with hybrid alignment. And we asked them, when would we be able to use small settings and how would we go about doing it? So they directed us to a video that they had done without any dialogue showing one of their technicians using a turntable and holding the Einstar in a static position and turning the turntable very slowly with the small object to capture the object's details. All of the objects that I've seen them scan using this particular method have been closed, compact, and usually rectangular in shape. Our object has some space between his legs, space between the arms and the torso. I think it's even more detailed than the objects that they scan, so I don't know if we're gonna get similar results, but we'll find out.
I still don't think it's quite as good as when we were using medium to large settings. I'm just going to clean up the jump data here. I'll create a cutting plane and then I'll use the lasso to clean up the rest of this. Let's go ahead and optimize and generate point clouds. Okay, so after optimizing and generating point clouds, we don't really have a whole lot to look at. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, that really doesn't look that great. Let's go ahead and pause our scanning. So before, every single time that, that we would get to this point and optimize and generate point clouds, the object would disappear. All right, so it actually works. We, we optimized, we generated the point clouds, and we actually have our object. Because the Einstar offers various methods of scanning, you should try out different things with your objects to see what gives you the best results. So if you found this video helpful, please hit like, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.